For today's lesson, we are going to get to know more about the only planet we know of so far that's inhabited by living organisms. Our very own Earth. Earth is the third planet from the Sun. It is situated in what we call the Goldilocks zone or the habitable zone. A planet in this zone has the right temperature, not too hot or not too cold, suitable for holding liquid water, an essential ingredient to support life. Our planet is a terrestrial planet. It is rocky and has a solid surface. Let's explore its internal structure. Earth has four distinct layers, namely, the crust, mantle, outer core, and inner core. The crust is the uppermost layer of the Earth. It is also the thinnest one. There are two types of crust, the continental and the oceanic. The continental crust is thicker and less dense compared to the oceanic crust. It is about 35 to 70 kilometers thick, while the oceanic crust extends about 5 to 10 kilometers on the ocean floor. Beneath the crust is the mantle. It is the thickest layer, making up almost 84% of the Earth's volume. It is about 2,890 kilometers thick. As you go down to this layer, the temperature and pressure generally increase. Its temperature is about 1,000 degrees Celsius to 3,700 degrees Celsius. Mantle has several layers, the upper mantle, the transition zone, the lower mantle, and the D-double prime. Upper mantle extends to a depth of about 410 kilometers from the crust. It has two distinct sublayers, the asthenosphere and the lithosphere. Lithosphere is considered the most rigid layer of the Earth and it is the layer associated with tectonic activities. On the other hand, the asthenosphere is found beneath the lithosphere. The temperature and pressure in this layer are so high, causing the rocks to become semi-molten. But take note that the asthenosphere is not liquid, but it is more ductile, meaning it has a capacity to deform or stretch under stress. The next layer of the mantle is called the transition zone. This is the layer in which rocks become much denser. It is also known for holding much water. But this water does not exist in liquid, gas, solid, or plasma phase, but this water exists as hydroxide, an ion of hydrogen and oxygen with a negative charge. Beneath this transition zone is the lower mantle. This layer is hotter and denser compared to the upper mantle and the transition zone. But even though it is much hotter in this layer, the intense pressure makes this layer less ductile or more solid than the upper mantle and transition zone. And beneath the lower mantle is the D-double prime layer. It is the lowermost part of the mantle and is found just above the outer core. The next distinct layer of the Earth is the core. The core is the hottest layer of the Earth. It is located about 2,900 kilometers below the surface of our planet. The main components of this layer are metals, specifically, iron and nickel. Some of the reasons behind the high temperatures at this layer are the radioactive decay of elements found in this layer and the leftover heat from the formation of the Earth. The core has two distinct portions, the outer core and the inner core. The outer core is primarily composed of liquid iron and nickel. This layer has very low viscosity allowing it to be easily deformed. Meanwhile, the inner core is mostly composed of iron. Unlike the outer core, this layer is not molten because of the intense pressure in the area. The boundary between the outer and inner core is called the Bullen discontinuity, which is actually the hottest region, with a temperature of about 6,000 degrees Celsius. So this is the internal structure of the Earth. Going back to our initial discussion, we mentioned that Earth is special because it can support life. One of the factors that make Earth habitable is its major subsystems, or also called as spheres. The four major subsystems or spheres of the Earth are the biosphere, geosphere, hydrosphere, and atmosphere. From the word bios meaning life, the biosphere covers all the living things on our planet. Every living thing you can think of, even the tiniest ones, are part of the biosphere. Geosphere, on the other hand, includes all the rocks, minerals, and landforms. Basically, the geosphere is the Earth itself. The sand, soil, mountains, the molten rocks beneath the Earth's surface are all parts of the geosphere. From the term itself, hydro or water, the hydrosphere covers all the solid, liquid, and gaseous water of the planet. In other references, ice or the frozen water part of the Earth is specifically called the cryosphere. Lastly, the atmosphere contains all the air in Earth's system. It is a mixture of gases that surround the planet such as nitrogen, oxygen, argon, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. 
The interactions of these four major subsystems maintain the Earth as we know it. Take a look at one example of their interconnectedness. The geosphere and hydrosphere serve as habitats for living organisms of the biosphere. The atmosphere also provides protection for the living organisms of the biosphere for them to thrive on this planet. There are countless interactions of these systems that you can observe around you. Can you think of one now? But since they are interconnected, what affects one may affect the other. This means that we must be responsible for ensuring that all these spheres are protected. Let's sum up what we have learned so far. Earth has four distinct layers, the crust, mantle, outer core, and inner core. Earth also has four different subsystems or spheres which are the biosphere, geosphere, hygrosphere, and atmosphere. 